Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's program. You're here at the round table with me. Uh, what have we got going on here? I don't know yet. We just sat down to vlog a little bit about tarot. We haven't done too many of these programs yet, but I want to thank you for joining me uh, and coming on in here. What we're going to do tonight is we're just going to take a look at tarot. We're going to take a look at some of my opinions. It's more like a video blog rather than a reading. We probably will get into a couple little readings. We're going to look at some viewer mail, have a top 10 list, things like that. Just all in regards to like the, some of the finer things um, that's going on, right? Maybe you're not doing much. Maybe you're just chilling out and you're like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with Norm for a little while at this little YouTube channel. So thanks again for being here. There might be some edits to this program going on here because I don't know how fluid I'm going to be. Ow, that hurts. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I have an easier time reading tarot on camera than actually just like talking and video blogging. I'm not too sure why that is. I guess that's just the way it is for me, right? So i got lots of little ding-dings and knickknacks and stuff going on for you. I was unable to line up any guests for the show tonight. Um, you know, Talfine was supposed to come on, but she didn't want to make it, uh, to talk about her gifts and what she's up to these days. And a couple other guests, prospective guests that backed out. So it's just me, you, everybody else, and Aloe Vera over here are going to keep you company for tonight while we get into things, okay? So I got a few things I want to talk about, I want to discuss, and then we're going to get into stuff. We're going to have another little giveaway uh, for those of you that were interested. Um, I came across some pretty cool stuff. I was just going to pull some cards here tonight that could kind of like center me and help ground me a little bit. So let's see what we got. I pulled Judgment, Temperance, and Three of Pentacles. Let's, let's see how those three cards are going to guide us through the reading. Okay, so first off the bat, I want to make a future prediction. Holy smokes, a tarot reader going to make a future prediction. What is up with that? You mean you're not just going to give us general insights that we have to set the intention to infer the knowledge and the words into our own life, right? Remember that old fortune cookie meme where it's like, you will continue to take general states, them states, or well, how did it go? You will continue to take general um, statements and see them as prophecy or see them as fortune telling, whatever it might be, right? All right. So I screwed up there. Like I said, there might be a few edits in tonight's program. I have a tough time keeping on track, but there we go. I am going to make a prediction. I'm going to predict in three years time in the year 2020, the catchphrase of that year, everybody's going to be saying hindsight is 2020 right? And they won't be talking about the vision. They'll actually be talking about the year because what's meant by that 2020 vision is perfect vision, right? And when you look into your past, uh, what you have a lot of the times is a clear understanding, like whether you made a mistake or whether you, whether you made an awesome decision, hindsight is 2020. You can look at it. It's already occurred. It's already happened. And you know full well how, how well it worked. As compared to when we look to the future, Things get a little bit foggy. Things get a little bit dicey, and we're not really too certain, okay? And a lot of us are in this time of this spiritual awakening. I know subscribers to this channel are where it's like, at what point can we move on, ditch the old 3D, 9 to 5, uh, you know, get in the back whipped by the man just in order to have enough to, you know, maybe make it through the winter or survive and to where we all come out and we share this resonant energy where we're all our own bosses. We're entrepreneuring in something. We're able to live our passions, live our dreams, do our passions. And it's where a lot of us get stuck. And it's where a lot of us tend to sometimes stumble along the journey. For some, it happens overnight. Very blessed, very gifted. For others, it takes like quite a long time, right? And it's arduous. And some may never ever like make that leap of faith to like go into it and say, okay, I can leave the security of this job, of this uh, whatever it might be, and go and, and live my dream. Because, you know, maybe you got four or five mouths to feed and people are relying on you. And like health benefits are paramount, right? Like you just can't make that. You're always wondering about tomorrow. And then you come across a whole schwack of readers on YouTube. They're just saying, just go for it. Just leave it. Just do it. Have some faith. Have some hope. And you're like, oh my God, like there is there is no way, right? And I'm, I'm here to agree with you on that. I mean, I am in that boat. I can relate uh, to those of you that are going through those particular uh, struggles and journeys at this time. But all I can say to you is keep moving forward. Keep progressing. I heard a really um, 
established and great astrologer on YouTube say, do a couple things each day that bring you closer towards your vision or closer towards your goal. Uh, you know, even if you have to dip out from the nine to five to do it, and it might just be as simple as listing something on Craigslist or uh, maybe shooting a little video of something inspiring that you can then go back and, you know, make your own and or something like that where your creative juices are flowing. For others of you where it's like maybe your vision is aligned with something corporate or something more organized and you're pushing forward to really change the world from behind uh, your position in the working world, that's where it's like the balance has got to be tough for some of you because how does that not follow you home at night and when you do uh, maybe get a little bit bummed out or stressed out about things, how are they not like magnified or amplified? You guys do a really good job of like keeping that balance, right? And for some of you, you may just be stuck on certain things about like old lovers, old relationships, things like that coming back, right? But we have to remember, we we as readers, tarot readers, and, and we that are like into it, we never want to be in a position where we want to like create a dependency on the cards or upon any kind of divination in itself to like cling to hope, to like cling to an expectation of the future because we've already lost. If that's the case, we've already lost. There needs to be this mm, fluidity to to remain in the moment each day and, and be accepting of whether or, so, or not something does or does not occur in our lives. It may be very well beyond us for good measure, for good reason. And it's all about our intention and our focus, right? So if we can learn to sort of... Mm, Make it, make it so that as our focus and our intention is not consuming, maybe on something that we don't have, or maybe it is overly on something, on something that's right in front of us that we sort of nitpick and analyze to the very nth degree, right? It's like, what point are we living that, that fullest, that truest life, right? A lot of, you'll hear, hear a lot of like um, healers and light workers say, you need to learn to die before you die kind of thing. And that's, that's really just a simple exercise. There's nothing like scary or magical or anything about it. It's really just you saying, all right, if you were to die tomorrow or the day after, you, you pose these three questions to yourself. What do you love about your life? What did you love about your life? Put it in past tense because it helps the exercise even more. Uh, what did you regret? What were your regrets uh, through this life? And the third question is, if you had a second chance, what would you do differently? Okay. Now these three questions come forward like at the start of the meditation. Then you're supposed to like take a deep breath in and hold it for like, you know, 300 minutes or something so that you get all lightheaded and like you think, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. No, just kidding. You're actually supposed to take a deep breath in and like just breathe in the good prana. And then the next breath out with the awareness of the realizing that each next breath is the very beginning of the rest of our life. You go forward with that with the answers to those three questions. And it can be pretty impactful. It can be pretty meaningful uh, to those that maybe are caught up in sort of a smaller or shower, shallower, doesn't mean shallow, like shallow how shallow, but shallower circles of thinking. It just means it doesn't go very deep. It begins, it ends, it begins, it ends, that sort of thing, okay? I haven't really even talked about these three cards. They're just here to help me ground and maybe give you a little bit more something to, to look at. Okay, so I wanted to start tonight um, with a bit of a top 10 list. Uh, and then we're going to get into some fewer mail, just like uh, the old way like David Letterman used to do it, right? Uh, back on prime time at night, he'd come out, do a little mo monologue, and then he'd go in and he'd uh, do his top 10 list, maybe talk to Paul and the band. I don't have a Paul. I got aloe vera plant, so say hello. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to start talking in about the giveaways and things like that, okay? Now, Three of Pentacles, let's get you up there. Let's see what's going on. Did my computer really just die? Did it really just do that? Okay, this is going to be the first edit of the video till I can like figure out what happened to my computer. Did it really just like shut off? I thought I had it plugged in. So yeah, that was the first edit there. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I just had this weird thing and I got to show you guys why I had to edit. I came up with this crazy magic trick. I went to like turn on my computer so we could start the viewer mail portion of the uh, readings. And what happened is I took this Three of Pentacles and I set it up here and my computer just went blank. Like absolutely blank. And you know what? It was the magnet in the hematite that like made the computer shut off. And like it did it again. So then there and then it comes back. It's so wild. And it like absolutely 
completely resets it. So that's so weird that that happened. I just wanted to uh, to show that with you. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go with the old Letterman style. I did my little monologue. Uh, oh, I got a story too for you singles out there. I, I'm a single guy, so like I, I, it's not that I resonate more with singles, but I can relate sort of more to singles. I've been in some long-term relationships too, but right now I'm single. I'm enjoying my life as a dad, uh, but I got a story for you singles. I'm, just before I started shooting this video, I went for my favorite plate of Vietnamese uh, cuisine down at the Vietnamese restaurant, and I'm sitting there, and I'm enjoying my stir-fry, and you know, in comes this lady and this gentleman and they sit down a few booths down for me and the lady, she's just looking at me like she's not even paying attention to the guy she's with. She's just staring me down and it occurs to me, this is a lady that I had been chatting to back and forth on um, on an inter interweb dating site. I forget which one it was, but on an internet dating site, we've been talking to each other for, oh, off and on, probably for like two or three years. Like, forgive me, guys, I've been single for a long ass time. But... Um, and she, and we've talked, but we had never met. And it occurs to me that this is her. This is this lady. We never made plans to go out for a drink. It like never got that far. She just wasn't quite that interested in me. I remember like asking her out a couple times, but she ghosted or whatever it was. She just wasn't that quite interested. And so suddenly uh, both of us have this awareness that we're staring at one, one another with through this weird, like internet, like chatting relationship that we've had, um, and yeah, so anyways, I'm kind of, I actually got more of a perspective of her as a person watching her being on a date with another person, even though somebody else had caught her eye, than I would have if I would have went on a date with her myself. And it actually turned out like I would kind of watch the way she treated him, the way she treated the waiter. And I wasn't very impressed, the long and short of it, about what was kind of going on there. But don't get me wrong, she's a beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, but yeah, it was kind of an interesting thing. And I don't know why I mentioned it. Just a single story for you singles out there. Just kind of saying, the future is always foggy. Don't give up hope. But, you know, sometimes you get these moments of clarity where it's like, wow, did that ever make sense? Or, you know, did was that ever blocked out of my path for a good reason, right? I look at that and I think forever how much I, I wanted to maybe go and spend money with this lady or with this lady and, and take her out on the town and stuff. Am I ever glad it never actually did happen because it wouldn't have been memorable. It wouldn't have been, you know, it, I would have been that other guy while she was staring off at other dudes. But anyways, I don't even know why that's relevant. We're kind of taking away from it here. But it's my show. I'm going to tell a story if I want. Okay, we're going to get into the viewer mail here. There might be some da da da's and some more edits as we get through here. Recently, I released the Cusper videos or the Cusp videos. I noticed online, like, not too many people were doing that. They weren't reading for the people in Cusps. Um... So I thought, what an idea. There's a lot of people that are born like on the cusp where the sun transits into a new sign or the day before, or the day after, and they feel the influence of both or they identify with both. So why not? And it was an overwhelmingly great response um, to these readings. OK, um, and I just want to hear we're going to start with Sonia McBurney. What a beautiful comment. She says, this is perfect. I'm not a cusp baby, but I'm Aquarius who is with a Capricorn. We have a long history of hurting each other. Though being angry and detached and him and he didn't know how to deal with our marriage, he'd have affairs, which led me to more anger, fear, and more detaching. Well, since June, we decided to try and reconcile. I'm ready to leave the past in the past and live in the present day. No worries about tomorrow if he is willing to do the same. If he is, I want him all in no running to another when things get rocky or when we work it out and talk together. It's a slow go little improvement, but love, patience, and understanding is the key to deep rooted private emotions. I feel we were putting it together to learn something from each other, and we haven't gotten there yet. That's why I gave him this new cusp. Thank you, or this new cup. Sorry. Thank you. I enjoy your readings and your babbling. It, oh, yeah, I babble and it's funny. Okay, peace and love. All right, so Sonia wasn't a cusp baby. She was actually someone who was born in Aquarius who was in a relationship with someone who was one side over Capricorn and the reading resonated. So 
it's kind of like it made led me to believe that it doesn't necessarily have to these readings don't necessarily have to just be for cuspers it could be for some of you that maybe you have sun and moon like back to back next to each other or like sonia you mean maybe your significant other is one sign over and then those readings can apply to you that way so thank you sonia for writing in if you are watching i really appreciate uh you guys sharing your stories in the comments as always and it kind of inspired me like for new year what i think i'm going to do is I think I'm going to release a series, I think it would end up being like 144 short videos where it's like you do a meeting in the middle for all of the signs. Maybe it's not 144, maybe it's much less, but you would do like sort of uh, like Aquarius Pisces, Aquarius Aries, Aquarius Taurus, you know, Aquarius, you know, all, all other 11 as it applies to Aquarius and then you move on and you keep doing those. So maybe for New Year's that will be the big hurrah from this channel. So stay tuned for that. Maybe uh, leave me some feedback if you think that's a good idea. Okay. So aside from Sonia, let's get up to our next. Um, these were from August, from the early August when I left these. Okay. Okay. Here. We go, Catherine Wiley wrote in, listening again, someone gifted me a portable pole and a pole dance that I did not expect at all. Definitely got some spiritual advice from someone really cool. They said, rejection is protection and always know what you really want and hold on to that instead of rejection because it would have been far worse if it had worked out any longer. Meeting new men who aren't turning out to be private, not so private heads like the last one and solidifying friendships. Thanks. I love to retro watch very up lately with Ambish. So Catherine kind of touched on what we said earlier. Some things maybe are just not meant to be. Like this rejection is protection. And this lady, it like took me to actually see her in a restaurant to like put it together where it's like, I wondered like, oh, okay, am I just not cool enough? Or maybe I, maybe I don't make enough money or maybe I just don't look handsome enough in my pictures. Like why wouldn't she come around? I've been very nice, been very jokey, just being myself online. But it is this rejection is protection thing that's going on. And when there is one of the oracle cards, it's called not for you. And when some people pull that sometimes, it's a very strong advice. It's like, all right, no matter how much we want it, no matter how much we think it's going to make us happy, we are not supposed to have it in this moment in our journey or maybe in this journey at all for our own level of protection. And whether it lets our guard down or whether it's like maybe detracts us from where we're inevitably supposed to be on a timeline at some certain particular moment in time, like there could be like angelic or other things going on with that. Rejection is protection. Very strong words, Catherine Wiley. And I want to thank you for sharing those Um on the on the video comments and to this channel all right these little round table videos give me a lot of like uh good inspiration to take because you guys are geniuses you guys are amazing intuitive spiritual soul juggernauts with so much to share and like i notice a lot of you that subscribe maybe you only have one or two subscribers but when you comment on these videos it's like you guys are sharing with the world and i just want to be a megaphone for that so all right now on to the next viewer mail i can't remember how many letterman used to do but i'm going to do a few um and maybe i'll stop mentioning his name uh just so i don't get into any trouble but he was one of my heroes one of my icons one of the funniest dudes that ever inspired me when i was a little kid like staying up you know till one in the morning just so i could watch him right okay anyways trina ponce de leon what a beautiful username uh, she said, you mentioned Ascended Masters in your reading, which I also study and love since they have transformed my life and made me realize my divine potential. I will be happy to connect with you on these spiritual teachings via email. You are the third astrologer online who I don't know well to have mentioned Ascended Masters. So I give priority to hearing them since they could be divided by divine, could be guided by divine spirit. All right. Now, I just want to kind of make mention of this because Ascended Masters, people sometimes get a little bit confused. Well, what is an Ascended Master? Who are the Ascended Masters? Where do they come from, right? And that sort of thing. And it's open to much uh, debate and much uh, conversation as to who did what and what did who and who's more divine. It's not about that. It's There's nothing in competition. But typically your mainstream religions will all have an Ascended Master uh, as the figurehead, as the, as the one, right? So in Western Judeo-Christianity, um, Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth is the ascended master. He is the one that came, should taught us how to love one another as we love ourselves. 
uh, which was a very relevant message that has taken even more than two millennia to sink in, right, for a lot of people, um, you know, and and don't, I, don't I'm not never selling any of them short. I'm just kind of giving a quick synopsis of why we why they make that ascended masters uh, list short list, so to speak. I'm not denying or 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 confirming any of them as being the one. All right, you the subscribers of me know me too well to do that. But I'll give mention to the others. Like so, in Islam, like Muhammad would be that ascended master, right, as the figurehead of that religion. Doesn't mean he did any more or less than the other guys, but he's the one that came through with the message of this. This is how to ascend. This is how to elevate your frequency, to raise your consciousness, to put you into a place where it's like you won't be bogged down with like medieval torture or like uh, anguish or things like this because these are the this is the new fruit that you need to bear in mind so that you can always be happy, you can always be prosperous, right? Doesn't mean you have to always be. We kind of like journeying along behind the ascended masters all have to go through our certain amounts of like pain and suffering for our healing right and that's where it's kind of all guiding to but again you've got buddha you've got brahma you've got krishna you've got uh you know all all sorts of one even through the um the Native American um, tribes and, and ancestors and elders, which there are too many to name, that have just been on this rock for, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of years. And these are the ascended masters that sort of like, they come in and out of waking life. And much like angels or spirit guides, these are kind of the the short list of souls that really are like come to check in on everybody it's like the principal coming into the kindergarten class even though he's got a million other things to do and just says how's everybody doing in here y'all good y'all okay all right just wanted to say hi i'm the principal i'm still here and then he bounces out right he pieces out and and that's kind of like the ascended masters so uh trina i want to thank you for writing in um i haven't been studying up as much as I should be. I've been doing a lot more inner work than researching on uh, the history of of our ascended masters. So I wish I could have answered some of your questions a lot more. But thank you for writing in and encourage me, encouraging me by thanking to uh, to do the cusp readings. Okay. Now here's Jackie Wild again on um, a message she left on the last roundtable video. She actually won the uh, tarot giveaway. So that was awesome. I like I was so happy for Jackie to win. And then she sent me her address and I was like, United Kingdom. I was like, crap, this is going to cost me 35 bucks just to get there. What am I doing here? There go all my profits from the first year of doing tarot readings. Oh, just kidding. But it was my... My pleasure to send it out to her. Uh, and I'm glad she wrote in just to say that she received it um, and whatnot. So she always writes in. And, and even if you just want to say, like, have a great day, have an awesome day. If you're doing some retro watching or something, that's awesome. I love to hear from that. Okay, now here we go. It's uh, kitty time. I went on vacation. I took the video of the kitty cats at, uh, at Grandma's house. And there was, like... She keeps like a hundred barn cats and just to like there, it's interesting to see a domesticated animal that has now like been reared, introduced into an actual, um, an agricultural ecosystem where the mice keep the, or sorry, the cats keep the mice down on the farm and they're bred in the wild, like these wild barn cats. And they're just so adorable to go bounce around and like, uh, you know, some of them are a little timid and some of them are more brave and they're just so cute. When they're learning like how to like uh, catch mice by like playing each other, my my son would run around with a string tied behind him, and they they'd all go crazy. And I, we had such a fun time out there. So thanks for your patience. That the radi readings were a little bit late getting out. Uh, and if you get a chance to go back and check out that kitty cat video, it's really fun. It can really relieve some stress. You might have to turn some music on in the background. It's a silent one, but so thanks to everyone that commented on that one. All right. We're kind of keeping on pulling through here till we get to the next big inspiring. All right. Uh, comment or viewer mail. They say comments. I, once we rebroadcast them, I, we uh, call it a viewer mail. So uh, let's see where we're at. We just keep going here. So many comments. And you guys know I do try to get to all of them. Um, and write back to as many as I can. If it's a simple thank you, I'm going to um, just leave you a heart to say I acknowledge you, namaste, uh, in your thanks, and I am grateful to you as well for for being 
thankful. So it's kind of a reciprocated process. If you do take some time to share a longer story or have something to let me know, I will do my best to like get back to you. It won't always be the same day, but eventually I'll get there. Okay. Now, the last one, because I won't keep you all night here, is from Camilla Hussein. Excuse me. And Camilla says, thanks, Norn. Your message about how we need to be the next best version of ourselves and to live as who we are authentically, no matter what others think, was very important to me. I realized that I've been holding myself back subconsciously because I was afraid to be who I really am. It's an ongoing battle and your words have strengthened me. Thanks again for your amazing video. Well, thank you, Camilla, for uh, supporting me and encouraging me. But your message here in, in thanks is the strongest reminder that we can have. And this is like sort of this kind of reducing our egoic self to, we don't want to kill it entirely as some teachers I believe say, you don't, you know, you don't want to just be a brain dead zombie one around there, like, you know, just like not doing anything, but you want to kind of get to this place where you're like, you're truly authentic in yourself by taking that ego and just kind of pushing them to the side more often than not. So that, you know, with when that you comes um fear of losing that fear of judgment being able to walk out of the house with a you know a bright red nose and a pair of suspenders on and maybe uh, shoes that are a couple sizes too big or whatever it might be you know maybe it's a big pimple on the end of your nose and you're just like i don't give a shit i don't care you know it's not like you're you're letting yourself go but you're also saying it doesn't matter to me what other people think it doesn't matter if this is the trendiest outfit of the of the spring summer season you know if i don't like uh desposito song and you know i speak my mind about it you know don't worry if if that's like the most popular thing you don't always have to sort of go along with that but it's tough because a lot of times we feel that pressure on a subconscious level just because we enjoy the company of people who don't really are aware that their ego is control of the of their true authentic self, at which point they're not being an authentic self because the ego does have control. We realize we're much more than that at some point, okay? So whatever you can do, whatever messages you can take to glean from that, uh, to make it more for you, more about you, and not just the you that's trying to get ahead in the world, the you that is trying to have this human experience, the you that is trying to feel all these things, interpret all this stuff, and make the most of each and every moment. If it is getting after the American dream, by all means, go for it. Get those pentacles rolling in. But if not, I mean, sometimes we need to stop, take a deep breath. Well, Maybe you are a part of an ascended master that's having experience here, or maybe you are on your way to becoming an ascended master, or any something like that degree. Okay, but here the real the root of what I want to get into Camilla's message here. Um, no matter what, he, um, sorry. I realized that I've been holding myself back subconsciously because I was afraid to be who I really am. All right, now. With what I said off the top of the video, hindsight is 2020. 2020 is going to be like year number, uh, the numerology of that year is four. So what, what we're going to see is a lot of people that are like, they'll be looking back over these last, these two or three years that are about to happen. And if they have not been existing in that place of authenticity because of fear, each and every year that passes from this year one forward is going to be filled with regret from subconscious or unconscious fear. We have to do our best, I feel, to really wake ourselves up to the point where we're just like, we kill it back with kindness, we bury our ego, we stop caring about the judgment of others, and we let this fear go. We let these, these intangible things that cannot hurt us stop hurting us. We have to be able to do that. And sometimes that comes from clinging to an expectation too tight. For each of you, it's going to be a little bit different. So that's my main message, my main thing there that's going on. Okay. All right. So, excuse me, I'm getting a little bit long winded here, but I hope this is making sense and like resonating up for a lot of you. Okay. I feel like it is. I'm, if, if I had to edit the thing like three or four times, I know I'd kind of be off track. It's, it's just a little tougher because you know, the, the, I actually get like intuitive flashes while I'm just like trying to vlog and trying to do this. We got a few, tar I got to get a few more tarot cards out just here, just to ground me a little bit. This is a reading for no one and everyone at the same time. Okay. Let's just take a moment. Let's, 
look around the little round table. You know, I'll bring it back to reality and let you guys get in touch with me a little bit more, okay? What do we got here? Well, we've got some race cars from my little guy. We we got a slot car uh, racetrack. Our, we've been started a little family business of, um, I don't know if you guys ever seen like American Pickers or Storage Wars. We we go around to estate sales and we find these little knickknacks and this fun stuff that we like and we like buy it. And it's like maybe two or three bucks here, five or ten bucks there, you know, and I'm getting back and I'm looking at Craigslist or and I'm like, what? Other people are selling this junk for like three, four hundred dollars. I'm like, woohoo, maybe we can make a go of this. And we have a lot of fun doing it. But the last time we were at and walking through dead people's houses is so cool. Um, no, I know much reverence for the dead, much, much respect for the dead. But it's like it's one of those things, right, where it's like you have to you have to put it to the side. Everything has got to have this sort of grain of salt to it. But we came across this little slot car racetrack for like 17 bucks. And, you know, I looked and I was like, wow, I can sell this thing for like three, four hundred dollars. Right. But then we set up the track to make sure it worked. And then we ended up having so much fun with the dang thing that now I can't sell it. I've actually invested in more slot car racetrack just because. Uh, so that one kind of backfired on me. But I spend some of my time now like repairing these little cars, these little knickknack cars. And we're having a lot of fun getting our family business off the ground. We're it's like we're dealing in Pokemon cards. We're dealing in old time compasses and barometers because I like to like predict the weather and stuff like that too, right? So that's what's going on. See this little crystal here. I thought this would brighten up the channel a little bit or at least the round table. You know, like a dollar fifty. I think that one was a dollar just at somebody's garage sale. Like just go by and it's like they don't want it anymore. I was like, you know what? I know. Probably a couple hundred people that would really appreciate watching spin round and round listening to me blather on. So, but that's what's going on with that. All right, a few more cards out, like I said, to, to get grounded. Then we're going to get into a top 10 list. Oh, speaking of grounded, they're all on the ground. Bear with me here, guys. I'm going to pick them up. Um, I hate editing, so I just, I would rather you guys just suffer through it. See what we got here now. All right, we got a hermit card up. Oh, now our pentacles have increased. We went from three pentacles to five pentacles, right? Okay, there. That might come back to what we're talking about either. You don't want to look back to the past and have regret either. A lot of people see this mundane level. Every time the five pentacles comes up, they're like, somebody's being left in the cold, right? It's not, this, this card is much deeper than that. It goes much deeper. And I want to bring you guys to a level of awareness where you just don't see it and pass it off because so many readers do as a lower pip card. The Five Pentacles is a very important um, message in the tarot. For those of you that are, are crib players, you'll know the power of these fives that they have in, in terms of the old traditional playing cards as a multiplier, right? It's like things that can grow. But fives often in numerology indicate a challenge, right? And challenges come for us when we are kind of in this fear of like walking through the future, oh, we're probably going to regret this. This probably won't be good for us. We, you know, I wish things could be better. You know, we have to improve the situation. And this is boils back down to a very basic primitive black mentality. I need more. I want more. I got to have more. I have to be accepted. I need this approval. I need this validation from other people. Well, this all comes back to five pentacles. This all comes back to this like lack mentality where it's like you feel you're deficient. So as we are healing, as we are sending, we become more hermit-like. We become like more to this like place of wholeness. We're not a half person looking for our other half. That's lack mentality, right? Um, we don't need anything to make our lives better. That's lack mentality. Our lives are already fulfilled in this very moment because we can breathe. Um, for many of us, it's because we can see, all right? And if you can't, my heart right now out to you for that. Um, for others, you know, here we are become this very whole person and through these very various healing process. So it comes to the ticky tacky bullshit. If you feel like you need to make it better or you don't have enough or anything, you have to really go inside and ask yourself, well, like, why do I feel that way? Why do I feel like it's not enough? Why do I, is it because you deserve more? When the Queen of Swords will really ask you, well, do you? What is your state of your karma? You know, um, and if so, like, 
what what makes it so? What makes you deserve more? If you think you deserve more, right? That sort of thing. If it's if it's that case and you want to test it, go out and do a ton of good works, just like any other you know uh, buddy that is living in hope and faith. You go and you ha- you you lend your service to other people, and you see maybe you do deserve it, maybe you don't deserve it, maybe all you deserve is more opportunity to give back, right? Whatever position you may be in, we. We need to be very aware of Five of Pentacles. When you guys are out there receiving a lot of your other readings, I feel, don't just pass it over quickly like, oh, poor me, right? Because the minute you think, oh, poor me, there, it's it's a downward spiral, right? It's like it's a deficiency based on a deficiency. So we need to really evaluate. The Five of Pentacles is a card of like being able to say, can you go with each step forward and each moment forward Now, not living in regret. Of course, looking into the past is perfect vision. Can we make it so living in the now is perfect vision and therefore maybe making our future a little bit more of a perfect vision? All right. That's kind of where we we pull clarity. You notice when they do the old Celtic cross, right? They've got this is what you're bringing through from the past. This is what's crowning the reading. This is what the foundation and this is like a near future. But this is what you're bringing forward from the past. It's it's a lot because of this vision. It's because of this hindsight thing where it's like we always see it crystal clear. But the future is always so unknown. It's like the exact opposite. Right. So the only time we have to like take that crystal clear vision and project it into the future is in the very moment that we're living in the right here and the right now and when we can learn to do that and practice doing that through our own letting go of our own self-limiting beliefs our own judgments our own egos the list goes on and on and on you can find a thousand different ways to practice this we then you can become uh, whatever that um, you know manifest manifesting things or law of attraction or whatever it might be right but in the right now i'm going to say the key one uh for me so far has been have fun don't take it so serious enter in with a light heart a light yoke and a light uh frame of reference to everything so that you can dismiss because a lot of it will get projected onto us you're not good enough you didn't do that you didn't meet your deadline blah 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 bullshit right we deal with that a lot of time so with a lighthearted approach we can say it, it can become like water off a duck's back so to speak okay i'm gonna leave these two up all right hindsight is always 2020 we'd like it to be like two months down the road my future my my vision of the future is 2020 right and hopefully in the year 2020 we'll have a lot more people saying uh that rather than hindsight is 2020 you can mark my words you can earmark this video in about four years time when 2020 hits it'll be like a running joke in the mainstream media hindsight is 2020 ha 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 right everybody get it. so that's my prediction for the future okay Speaking of 2020, let's go 10 and 10. I got a top 10 list, all right? My top 10 list for this roundtable video might be somewhat controversial. Uh, and I want everyone to know because I know a lot of other readers check out this channel and a lot of people that get a lot of readings check out this channel. This isn't us throwing shade at anyone. This isn't sliding anyone. These are just my own opinions about the industry, about the way it is, about what's going on. But what I wanted to do with a top 10 list, I don't even know if I got 10 here. I got, I maybe got eight. Um, are um, red flags. Red flags to look for when you get a private reading, when you sign up, when you go to uh, a clairvoyant, to um, somebody, a, a, an astrologer, a tarot reader, things like that. We're going to focus on tarot because it's my passion. Um, red flags because a lot of people, you don't want you don't want to be separated from your cash dollars. You don't want to be separated from your money. You don't want someone else maybe to be telling you too much about what your future is going to be like, but you're uncertain. It's why you go. I totally understand it. I spent a lot of days in uncertainty myself where it's just like I have to have it. So I want to give you some red flags. This isn't for the general readings that you guys receive on, on YouTube. Uh, those are, I, I have so much respect for all the people that give the general readings on YouTube. They're all so good. There is like maybe like one in in 100 or one in 250 readers out here that might just be like a charlatan or just bunk or in it for a fly by night thing. Um, So I'm not throwing shade at anybody, even if they feel like they do that. These are just my little red flags, my little pet peeves, Um, especially if you go to 
to get a private reading from somebody, whether in person, via the telephone, or via the internet, okay? I thought this might help you, and for some of you, you might just want to, like, um, you know, write to me and tell me I'm a doofus, because a lot of these pet peeves I end up doing in my general readings as well. So, number one pet peeve, or sorry, number 10 pet peeve that I have about tarot readers uh, in private readings is tarot readers that go, um, all the time, and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny when you you know you're watching a video and they just they they are at a loss for words and they go uh and radio broadcasters do it too every like once in a while they just go they'll be talking they'll be introduced they'll be hyped they'll be excited and then they'll go uh or okay right those little catchphrases where you just know it's filler they can't think of the next best word okay that was kind of a fun one but I do it too right. But you have to think about hum. That's the same sound they make when, like, the Ascended Masters mat. Um, I almost said <laughs> when the Ascended Masters meditate. Try not to get your tongue tied around that one in some sort of thing that will get you <laughs> blocked on YouTube. Okay, now um, one of my biggest re um, pet peeves or red flags for your personal readers, guys, is readers out there who are creating this dependency. So these are readers that will string you along, okay? They'll, they'll maybe give you 45 minutes. It might be a very authentic, true, clear reading. But then almost like when a reality show goes to commercial break, they'll be like, and right after this, right? At the end of your session, they'll be like, oh, there's so much more here. But, uh, oh, unfortunately, my next appointment is, is coming here. You just have to take that with a grain of salt. You have to say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it right? Uh, that sort of thing, and don't look too much into it, okay? It, and it may not like take anything away from the reading you just had or that person's professional ability to read tarot. It's just like kind of one of those things where it's like you want to kind of keep it in mind that, oh, yeah, that's the hook. That's the thing that, that's keeping me coming back after the next two weeks of my life or the, the next 20 minutes of commercial break, okay? Now, um, tarot readers that are, are not shuffling in front of you or do not let you hold the cards before they read, okay? I'm from the old school. I was reading tarot before internet was actually a thing, all right? I did it over the telephone. It was really tricky because I would have a tough time over that many millions of, or thousands of miles to get the other person's energy into the tarot. Like, so then, of course, you would ask for a specific birth date, and that would be the, the bridge gapper to get that energy of that person in, if they had the time of the born, they were born to. Uh, you could relate it back to how they identify as a Cancel Virgo, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the birth date and the voice was how the energy would come through into the tarot. Now, um, when you go to a tarot reader in person, they should actually take the deck of cards and, and say, here, touch these. Shuffle these until it feels right to you. That sort of thing. And you're actually putting the energy from your hand. Or some will actually, they'll do this trick where you'll hold your hands like this or like this. And they will they will mirror it. They'll put their hand over. So there's that energy sharing. And then they'll touch the cards. But if they're not doing something like that, it's kind of like... Um, one of those things, it's an integrity thing, right? It's it's like general readings that where they don't shuffle on camera. I get it. You guys, some of them just want to save, you know, um, two minutes of upload time. Or maybe they're not chatty Cathy's like I am. I struggle with it while I'm shuffling, trying to find things to say to keep you guys interested until the actual messages do start. But it is an integrity thing to see those cards being shuffled. Or if you are having a reading done uh, in person, to actually have them give you the cards, and feel at liberty to ask to hold the cards before the reading begins. And if they don't do that, you might want to find yourself a new reader, okay? Now, lately, another thing that's kind of been getting my goat, um, and this is more on the, uh, the YouTube side of things, um, content revenue and um, monetization of these videos. Now, like if I were to drop an F bomb, I'd get a little yellow dot that says, you know, Taylor made golf clubs or like GMC trucks doesn't want to uh, support your video, so it's going to cut your advertising. And like people were losing their minds about this. Just like, how can I be, how can they do this? And, and you know, this is like my bread and butter is getting flushed down the toilet right now here because I can't be myself. Well, each person has to make their own. Um, their own call on that. Some people read tarot and they swear like a sailor and other people love that, right? So 
it's kind of an authenticity thing too, where it's like, if you're going to stop that just because you're going to lose 19 cents on 2000 views, well, it's like, come on, do you really want to be getting, are they really doing the, the readings for you guys? Or are they doing it for themselves sort of thing, right? I try to keep it PG, but sometimes like I get pissed off and my mouth slips a little bit, right? I try not to let it get the best of me. But for those sort of things, if you notice those sorts of changes there, you may just want to realize like who is really just trying to, who's really like interested in helping you versus who is just trying to like sort of separate you uh, and sees you as opportunity, okay? more so than anything. And again, I'm not sure throwing shade at anyone, no matter what their views are on this. This is my opinion now. And I stopped watching other tarot readers. I started reading tarot in February. I watched for a couple months just so that I could sort of see where I fit in to to the to the NASCAR race, like where whether I was the number ten car, whether you know how I was doing it compared to others, because I was on such a long hiatus, I didn't even know where I fit in anymore. But I stopped uh, watching them. Uh, sort of relentlessly or religiously, like a couple months later, there's a few awesome readers that I still like take my personal messages from or personal guidance from, which is awesome. But I don't really watch a lot just to see anymore. So please, if you're another reader checking this out, know that I'm not throwing shade at all. And I'm just trying to help the people that have subscribed to, to this channel, right? Because I want to create that, that stronger bond there, okay? Which brings me to the next point. Um, and it's, it comes back to e-bagging. All right. If you've received a reading from a reader and you're like, okay, well that was fine and good. Maybe it resonated 50%. You paid your $40, your $8. That's fine. Okay. That's really all well and good. A uh, transaction occurred, a service was applied, it was met, it was done. And that's the way tarot has been for 400 fucking years. And that's the way it always should be. If I had my way, it would be based on trade. It would be like, here, I'll give you a candle if you give me a five-minute reading. Or, you know what, I'll trade you this little nugget of crystal I have in my pocket for a 20-minute reading, right? There would be no cash dollars involved. Um, but, you know, if that occurs and then, like, two or three weeks down the road, you're, like, getting messages back from that reader being like, oh, uh, I just, uh, I want to do another reading for you. Be sure, like, how come you didn't come back for another reading? You have to want to watch because there's a fine line and it's like, I'm not accusing you of anything, but this tarot is a gateway that's, there's a door that swings both ways, okay? You have to be very discerning and very careful for those that are just e-begging at this time. It kind of ties in with the last ones, okay? All right. The, one of my other major red flags, I can't even remember which one we're on now. Maybe we're like on number six or number five. So we'll just say number five, tarot's, tarot readers who are sick all the time. They come on or they you go into their office and they're like, well, I have the sniffles. I'm sick today. Well, it's like, well, why are you potentially getting me sick? Why are why am I even here breathing like the, the same cold and flu bug that you're spitting out and coughing out right now, right? It's kind of like if you're sick, like for me as a ditch digger, if I'm sick, I take the day off because if I come in and get other 10, 10 other ditch diggers sick, then my boss is going to be pissed at me. He's going to be mad, right? He's like, if you're sick, just stay home, deal with it, get it done. And you kind of have to want to ask yourself, if, if there's a tarot reader and they're sick like maybe every like, you know, every other time you watch them or like every third time you watch them, you got to be like, is this person really healthy enough to help me? Can this person really be a benefit to me? We have to kind of wonder or question like, why are they sick all the time? Is it something more than just a physical ailment? Maybe they do just have a cough due to cold and allergies all the time, right? But maybe there's something deeper there. Maybe there's something where it's like spiritually they're not flourishing and it's coming through as a physical sickness. So be very discerning there as well with sickness, okay? All right. Now, more so in terms of like sort of this... Um, um, acknowledgement center there are readers out there who love to hear your story they did a lot of them they won't want to hear your story until after they've given you some messages just because they want to you know make sure they're staying authentic in your eyes which is very fair they'll be like don't tell me anything i, I don't want to know your birth date i don't want to know anything uh, and it keeps the reading true fair and very it's easier to pull messages that way if they don't know anything about you but, you know, in terms of developing a relationship, a lot of time you will have additional questions. Like you will have um, a discerning um, or maybe for those of you that are very intellectual, you'll want some reasoning 
behind why they thought that may or may not have been true or what they meant by that. And for readers who will not acknowledge that, uh, will not will say, well, it is, it just is what it is, or maybe they won't even acknowledge that to you. It's like, you, it's almost like a doctor or a dentist in a way. You, the doctor and the dentist doesn't want to be your friend. You know, even if you're a friendly person, they're a friendly person. They have a professional relationship to to have with you. They fix your teeth or they fix your lungs, and you go on your way. But they are there. It's almost like the Hippocratic Oath. Like tarot readers also have to sort of take that into consideration where it's like, you know what? I'm going to help you no matter what it takes. Um, if you have additional questions, let's pull extra cards here or let's get it done to figure it out. And of course, you know, maybe it does take an extra session or maybe, but if they just don't want to acknowledge it, if they just want to keep going back and say maybe you've got a, something, a situation where it's like, you're wanting to know about a career, but they just keep pulling cards and it's like, well, all they want to do is talk about relationships and love. And you're like, I have no interest in love or relationships. Then it's time for me to maybe sort of look or source out somebody who's, go it's like that second opinion thing. You want to get that, okay? All right. Now, I really feel like people are probably getting bummed out. He's like, he's giving away all tarot secrets. And he's, you know, every reader has done that through their learning process. And again, I'm not sh throwing shade. And everybody has their good days and bad days. I'm not denying that at all. Okay. So that just makes people who they are. Right. Okay. So that's pretty much all I have. Right. Oh, the very last one. I guess if it was number one, like I said, I don't think I quite had 10. Top 10, this would be my top 10 car, right? Uh, reasons, why, uh, red flags for personal readings. My, my number one is false hope readings. Readings who will tell you, readers who will tell you over and over, yes, your ex is coming back. Yes, you will fall in love with the person that you're envisioning. Yes, you, you know, it may or may not happen for you. It, it may or may progress. If they see it in the cards, if they see an ace of cups and they see a two of cups, they're going to let you know. It's going to be part of your message. But if they're looking like at a seven, a five, and an eight of swords there, and they're like, oh, I see that you might be, you have to always find out when hope is being strung along falsely based on the cards versus 